This is Michael Taylor, host of Theater Corner, and we're in Los Angeles, California at the Geffen Playhouse. And we're sitting here with the incredibly talented <laughs> Kelly McCreary. And she's one of the cast members of the Skeleton Crew. How are you? Very nice to have I'm you. I'm great. It's so nice to be here. Thank you for having me. We get a quick fun fact out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'm really excited that you're, you're here because uh, I attended Columbia, and, and you studied right across the street That's at right. Barnard College. That's right. We sort of share an alma mater. Um, yeah, I went to Barnard for undergrad, and um, I loved it there. It was awesome. Spent a lot of time over at Columbia, too. All right. So all the cross-registration and cross-pollination <laughs> over the extracurriculars <laughs> and everything. So. There you go. So in this piece, you, you, you play Shanita this particular character, uh, which will, you'll have a bump also. Yeah, yeah, Shanita's pregnant, yeah. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about this character. Shanita believes in the American dream, mm -hmm. as she has witnessed it in Detroit. It's a union town. Mm -hmm. It's a town where people earned their way into the middle class and these blue collar jobs, union jobs, um, bought homes for themselves, educated themselves, started businesses, and um, really were able to realize this notion that we call the American dream. And she's invested in it. Her family, her community, is all a reflection of the possibility. Okay. Um, but she is living in a different time when um, the bottom has sort of is starting to fall out of the economy in Detroit. And there's there have been signs of the deterioration of the industry and so she's really struggling with her idealism and her sense of optimism with the realities of, of the world that she's living in. Mm -hmm. And so she's a bit of a dreamer, she's a bit of a poet, and she's a damn hard worker. <laughs> uh, and she believes in hard work, right. you know, uh, getting you somewhere. This is not the first Dominique Morisot piece that you've performed in. Yeah. Uh, what what is it? What does it mean to you to to do to do some of her pieces? In? Oh gosh, when I I first met Dominique, I think I should probably check this with her, <laughs> but I'm pretty sure the first time I met Dominique um, was uh, as an actress. When Dominique was it, Dominique is a terrific actress right. as well, nice. and this was years ago. It must have been like early aughts. Uh, we were doing a reading of a Katori Hall play. Mm. And I witnessed Dominique and Katori and some of the ar other artists and actresses in that room at that time really struggling to find a place for themselves in the American theater, right. um, to see their stories represented, hear their voices represented. And, and then I watched them make it happen right. and so uh, you know a, as a peer I feel tremendous pride and gratitude mm. for her contribution to the American theatrical canon and she is also on a mission to sort of um, correct the record okay. <laughs> of, of the way that black stories are told the way that audiences consume us and you know she's really an activist in mm. in that way it makes me feel inspired to right. work with her and it gives me a tremendous sense of purpose to use my artistry to serve her work um, and um, so yeah it's 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 a tremendous honor to to do the work of Dominique Mariso and I hope to, to do it my throughout my career <laughs> I really love the way she gives the, the everyday black person a voice just like uh, the same way yeah. August Wilson does in his pieces. Uh. Absolutely. She's absolutely carrying the torch, picking up uh, the mantle of the writers who've come before her who have written our stories mm. without censorship or apology yeah. or explanation. You know, it's sort of a for us, by us <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, approach to, to storytelling, which gives us an opportunity to investigate the inner lives of black characters, black families, black communities, um, in a way that we, we don't always get to see. Right, right. 
how does a little girl from Wisconsin <laughs> end up being a, a, a big TV star? Uh, you yeah. know, what, at what point did you, you figure out acting was what you wanted to do? I am a product of the Milwaukee public school system. Oh. Um, my parents were really committed to making sure we had the best education possible, and that was actually possible in Milwaukee mm. public schools at one time. <laughs> <laughs> and we took classes in all of the arts at the schools okay. that we went to. We had, you know, electives. Um, I don't really think that's the case in a lot of public schools these days, no. but yeah, I really benefited from that. I, I was exposed in, in school to um, fine art, to music, theater, all of it uh, from a very young age. And mm. I tried my hand at all of it and I loved it. That was my favorite part of going to school. You know, I, I'm a huge believer in the arts and education, not just as like a thing to do that you might wind up doing professionally one day, mm. but because it helps your brain assimilate right. all of the other information <laughs> that you're getting in school. And it supported my education and I, I loved it. I became very passionate. I played the flute and <laughs> you know, I, I loved to draw, I did all of it. Um, but ultimately, I think that um, storytelling and performing was just the thing that lit me up the most. So ultimately, I, I knew I, I think from a pretty young age, I knew I wanted to be an actor. I didn't know how I was gonna do it or what that looked like. And, mm -hmm. um, but I just figured if I continued my education, if I kept studying it and I got my training, then I would find a way in to the business. And you, you worked hard just like your character Shanita. I like to describe myself as sort of incrementally ambitious. Um, <laughs> you know, I never okay. really had the audacity, honestly, to dream that I would get to be on one of the biggest television mm. shows in history. But I just wanted to do good plays right. first and then get paid to do good plays mm. <laughs> and then, you know, work at some of the best American theaters and uh. then, okay, maybe in Broadway and then, okay, maybe I'll do a commercial, right, you know, right. and, <laughs> and make some other kind of money uh. and um, uh, to support my theater habit, really. True. And, uh, and then, you know, so I just sort of gradually started um, increasing my expectations for myself and as I sort of checked off the, the, the smaller goals that I made. But I, I, I really stayed focused, I think, most of all on community. Okay. You know, the community of artists around me that I was um, uh, meeting and working with and working to develop their work with. And I knew that that would take me somewhere. You mm. know, I, I thought like, if we can be this gang of artists working together, supporting each other and each going out on our own to grow our careers individually and then coming back together, then, you know, we could, we could have a sustainable career in this industry. Right. And, and, a, and a career you certainly do have. I mean, you're, you're, you've, you've done four seasons so far on, on Grey's Anatomy. And so I'm wondering, uh, what, what brings you back to theater? You know, what, what is it about theater that, that you think is important or, or draws you back? Well, I mean, first of all, it's kind of my home base. Mm. You know, um, it was my first passion. Uh, as much as I love working on camera, um, I didn't start there, right. you know? And so there's a real sense of like, when I come back to work in the theater, I feel like I come to retrain my muscles and resharpen my okay. skills, those, and those first skills of storytelling that I learned of character building. I do try to fully find a way to make the character's skin my own. Mm. And sometimes that means putting on something, you know, sort of, I guess, energetically that's external to me. And sometimes it means kind of like blending the two skins together. Right. And, um, yeah, I think that Maggie, Maggie and I, Maggie Pierce, my character on Grey's and I share a lot of personality quirks in common. Okay. So that, not life experience by any means. But like, <laughs> um, and then the rest is there in the writing, I think. Uh -huh. It just, they really know how to write for my voice and my sensibilities. And, um, and so, you know, they, that really helps to make my job um, seem effortless, okay. I think. <laughs> and so with, with all your success, theater and television, mm. what bit of advice would you give to up and coming actors? You know, I would tell young up and coming actors, artists generally, is to really um, 
look alongside you, you know, mm. look at your peers, um, invest in each other, support each other. You know, you're the ones who are gonna be growing together in, in, in the professional pursuits that mm. you're into. Really invest in that community. I think that there's this idea that like, you know, if you're an actor, you, you gotta get hired by somebody, you gotta, you know, look up a hierarchy mm -hmm. um, in order to get into the business. But it's really smart and really um, important to look laterally and invest in the talents and the ambitions and the dreams of the people around you and make your own work right. together. Um, and I would say get your training and work your butt off and don't, <laughs> um, don't expect that your career is going to look like anybody else's career. Right. And, and have patience and faith and learn how to network. Mm. Networking is tremendously important. It's a skill that I like. <laughs> I'm still working on myself. <laughs> a lot of the training programs, the conservatory training programs, are really great at giving you your, your artistic toolkit. And um, sometimes you have to work on developing your own uh, mm. business person's toolkit. And they are equally important. Mm. Um, you know, the networking, the promotion, right. you know, all of that stuff is, it's, if you want your work to be seen, you've got to be able to, to do that stuff. Right. So. Before we, we let you go back to re rehearsal, you have some parting words about the play itself? Yeah. I think that if you like character-driven drama mm -hmm. that feels important and urgent in the moment that you're living in, you need to come and see Skeleton Crew. If you are curious about the inner lives of hardworking people who are trying to navigate a landscape that mm. seems to be falling apart right in front of them, <laughs> you need to come and see Skeleton Crew. Mm. And if you believe in perseverance and the strength of black communities, you uh, should come and see Skeleton Crew. <laughs> beautiful. <laughs> thank and, you. and there you have it. And thank yeah. you so much for being so generous with your time. Oh, it's a pleasure. It's and, a pleasure. Uh, and and good luck on the run of Skeleton Crew. Thank you. And thank you, viewers, for tuning in for another episode of Theater Corner, and we'll see you next time.